Fun with failure. Hello and welcome. This is Dallas with Fun with Failure. How do you love my makeup today? I worked really hard on it. We've got 10 TIFU stories for you today. I hope you enjoy. So instead of distracting you with my beautiful face, here we go. Over the last few days, I've been dealing with some minor testicular discomfort. After dealing with this for a few days, I decided to go get it checked out by a physician. When I sat down in the waiting room, I realized I had to go to the bathroom. So naturally, I proceeded to the restroom to take care of my business. As it turned out, one of the tests that the doctor needed was a urine test. Because I had already urinated just before the examination, the test would not be valid. So an alternative test would have to be taken. This alternative test? while more accurate, is much less pleasant. It was at this point that the doctor informed me that it would be a cotton swab method test instead. If you've never experienced this delight before, they took a thin cotton tip rod and they proceeded to shove it into my penis. At first, I didn't think it would be painful, but god dang it was really unpleasant. Lesson learned, I'm holding it next time. This just so happened this fine morning. I've been doing some touching up on the bottom part of my walls of pleasant white. Call it ivory, call it snow, call it whatever. It's obviously Blanca. I've been busy as of late, as I've been my whole existence. So when I'm done touching up a little, I move on to what I needed to do next. Well, I close the paint can and I just put it near the edge of the kitchen and the edge of the staircase that leads downstairs. Well, this morning I was awoken at 645 by the desire to urinate. Common thing that I've heard through the grapevine. I peed and I decided I was thirsty. I was tired though, having gone to sleep at 2 a.m. and been woken up just a short four hours later. Anyway, in my sleep deprived drowsiness, I wandered upstairs to grab water. On my way back downstairs, being tired and clumsy as a result, why did I kick down the stairs? You've got it, the can of paint. So the result. In slow motion, I saw the paint can hit the first stair, pop its lid, and proceeded to flip and twist like an acrobatic airplane. Why, yes, you're wondering. Did the paint can airplane also continue to decorate my stairway carpet and blue walls? Sure thing. In the Jackson Pollock's fashion, my walls and my carpet and all in the path of Hurricane Ivory was splattered. So there's a mistake. I sleepily kicked a paint can down the stairs and made my downstairs look like a god dang paintball arena. To add insult to injury, I got to scrub the paint out of my carpet in hopes of helping the appearance. To no avail, of course. So I'm glad I got water but less glad about the need for new carpet and to figure out how to unpaint the basement walls. And of course, the basement isn't a concrete dungeon. It's a nice finished room. The one that I call my home base. Delightful. You know how on the Flintstones, there's a garbage disposal unit under the sink. It's just a wide mouthed dinosaur behind the curtain. That thing would eat anything like vegetables, meat, bones, stone cans, whatever you wanted to dump in there. Regardless of what cartoons may have taught you, or no matter what your previous existence may have led you to believe, your life garbage disposals are not like that. I discovered this today when I reasoned, well, the trash can is full, but I need to dispose of this ham. Oh, don't even. I know you've had that thought before. I'll put it down the sink. Whatever. So I turned on the water and the disposal and I began to put chunks of ham down the drain. Things are going along great, by which I mean the sink is making violent pounding noises and startling the kids, until I noticed the water was backing up in the sink. Well that's odd, I thought. But I continued shoving ham down the drain like there was no tomorrow. Eventually I run out of ham, and now the pink water is up to my forearms. Well surely the disposal can handle whatever I throw at it. I'll just let it run a little while longer. Two straight minutes of disposal spinning and it's not draining. Oh crap. At this point, I already know what the issue is. The disposal has turned this solid ham into some substance resembling thick vomit. And now this slurry is packed into the U-shaped pipe beneath the sink until no water can pass. So I make the completely reasonable decision to let it sit for 24 hours. As we all know, it will magically cure itself, right? The next day. Time to fix this, I guess. Step one. Attempt the plunger to force the clog through. I grab one from the bathroom and go to town on the sink. The water's moving, not out of the drain. It's coming up the wrong way back into the dishwasher. Crap. Step two, 
get under the sink and unhook the pipe from the disposal. An endless sea of ham-smelling puke water gushes forth from the hole. I'll wedge a bowl under it, but it's too late. The under sink now has a damp layer of old men's pig, and so does my clothes. Fine, it's time to try to loosen the clog. I turned to my trusty drain snake and began attempting to feed it through the pipe. Two inches in and it runs into a snag. This filth is packed tighter than I thought. I turn to my trusty fingers and I scoop out lump after lump of soggy pork flesh into a bowl. After a bit of progress, I have to dump the bucket and start again. Like an idiot, I reconnect the disposal and run the water again, fill in the sink. Line 20, go to. Get sprayed with water again, you idiot. The drain snake is scooping out ham at a rate at roughly one tablespoon a minute. Okay, stick a knife down there. Okay, try to fill it up with bleach. Life pro tip, bleach turns really hot when it's in the process of melting ham. I love science. Okay, try a screwdriver. Whoops, drop the screwdriver into the bleach filled drain. Now I'm trying to angle needle nose pliers into the opening to pry it out. My ancestors? who probably chopped down trees with bare fish and built houses from them, are weeping silently at my colossal ineptitude. Roughly 45 minutes into this, I scoop out basically a quarter of the input ham. The kitchen reeks of raw bleach, pork, old water, and whatever else was originally in the drain trap before I disturbed it. In its slumber of 10,000 years, I decide to reconnect the disposal one more time and run the water. It's filling, it's filling. Oh, thank God, finally. The clog frees itself. On the plus side, my wife knows nothing of this beyond something's wrong with the garbage disposal, and I fixed it. So a few weeks ago, I finished mowing my lawn, and I parked my lawn mower in the garage. Now, I have a pretty old door on this garage, and the metal tracks used to shut the door. It's all sorts of misshaped. Because of this, when I pulled the door shut from the inside, the top section of the door came off its tracks. It swung down and it blindsided me in the back of the head, nearly knocking me unconscious. Luckily, my melon of a head absorbed the blow by cracking the plexiglass window in the door. Because of this incident, almost every time I close the door, I place my hand on the top segment to prevent it from crashing down on me as I'm closing it. However, this morning when I went bike riding, I entered back into the garage to place my bike back on its rack whilst jamming out to my favorite tunes. You know, busting the move, feeling the groove. When it came to closing the garage door, one hand was pulling the door down. The other door was busy getting it on with the beat, rather than supporting the door from falling on me. Just my luck. This happened to be one of those times that the wheel of the garage decided to pop off its track. I had heard the dreaded noise of it falling, and I knew right then that that was the end. The segment came swinging down on me. My head made contact right where the crack was made from the previous rendezvous, causing it to break directly through the plexiglass, leaving gashes on my head and down the side of my face. And there I was, wearing the window around my neck like a necklace, in complete shame as blood painted my shirt. Luckily for me, the cuts weren't too deep, so I didn't need to get to the ER, though I might have to live my life looking like Scarface. I have a nine-year-old female dog. Normally, I cuddle with her every night. That turned out to be a mistake. I woke up with her feet in my face. This was a bit odd, so I pushed her away. I start to smell something really foul. So I went ahead and pushed her all the way out of bed when I noticed something wet on my sheets. It was a red, extremely funky, nasty fluid that was all over the sheets. Then I noticed it was on my hands. It somehow filled my belly button. I started to gag and almost lost it. I tried not to scream or yell because I didn't want to wake up my family. I ran to the shower to clean myself. It was a lot like the classic scene of Ace Ventura the Pet Detective. I went to go clean my bed off and do the laundry. And as I was in the laundry room, I could still smell that rotten, foul dog juice. I looked over to see if it was hidden. I took all my clothes off and I could still smell it. I thought, no, it couldn't be. It was in my hair. I had to take another shower. I will never look at that dog the same. Last night I decided to cook some spicy fajitas with a lot of bread. That's mistake number one. I've got serious IBS issues, to the point that a cup of coffee, it makes me ready to erupt like a chili volcano. 
This morning I woke up with that distinctive rumble in my stomach. That's my body basically saying, cancel your plans today, you're in deep crap. As I was sitting on Reddit, with my butt spewing hot molten tar, something sparkled in my peripheral vision. Baby wipes. Johnson's no nonsense, no more tears. I was overjoyed. My morning went from the despondent act of cleaning the tiller from a shaggy carpet with a dry cloth to bathing in the sweet butt nectar of the gods. My face grimaced with pleasure. My lips curled into a childish grin as I delicately stroked the rim of my anus, like a monk cleaning every speckle of dust from the Buddhist temple. I was clean. I felt great. And I had a wonderful day. That was actually a mistake too. It wasn't until the train into town later that day that I felt a weird burning sensation. It was tickling around my butt, like sparks of embers dancing along my skin. The feeling grew until it surrounded my butt like a blanket of fire, melting into my butt cheeks with no hope or cure. I ran to the train's toilet. I took off my trousers and had a thorough look at what was going on. My cheeks were red raw with the effluvium of disinfectant emanating from my butt. It dawned on me. Besides baby wipes, it was disinfectant. The stuff that's used to clean all the grimy, dirty areas from a kitchen or bathroom, I more or less spent half an hour caressing bleach into my butt. So now, here I sit on my butt sitting in a pool of cold water while I whimper in self-pity. This morning, like every morning, I took a shower. I woke up kind of late, so I was really hungry. So I went straight from the shower to the kitchen to make myself a sandwich. I was wearing only my towel because I'm lazy and no one else is home. As I'm grabbing the sandwich stuff, the house cat is rubbing up against my legs. Now as a note on this cat, I hate it. I hate it so much. It isn't cuddly, it's bitey, and it also freaking hates me back just as much. And now, because food is involved, it wants to be my friend. Screw you cat, screw you. I get this idea in my head that it would be hilarious to hotbox this cat with a fart. I can trap it under the towel since it's right under me, and she literally won't know what's about to be unleashed. I put my sandwich stuff down and I commit to the plan, because I'm a retard. So I squat down a bit, because I want a nice seal using the beach towel as sort of a shower curtain against the floor. I want this crap to be hermetically sealed. Screw you, cat. I'm in position and I'm giggling, almost naked in the kitchen and about to fart on a cat. I release the hounds, nothing happens. I try harder because at this point I'm committed, and something happens. The cat is now covered in a thin layer of crap. Aghast at this development, the cat decides to go bat crap and panic. She claws the ever-living crap out of my ball sack and streaks off around the house. I had to chase her down and throw a poop towel over her to calm her down, and then quickly take her to the bathroom to both bathe the cat, which she hates, and peroxide my torn up balls, which I hate. As a recompense, I gave the cat my sandwich. A lot of people are real mad and acting like I specifically woke up this morning with the malicious intent of crapping on the cat. This is not the case. I misjudged a harmless fart. Please stop threatening me with violence. I'm already suffering the instant karma of blended ball sack. Alright, question and answer. Why do you even own a cat you hate? I don't. It's my housemate's cat. How did your cat stay under the towel so long? Jet fuel can't melt steel beams. Have you? Have you seen a cat begging? Or a cat shoving themselves into a small place? Cats are basically liquid. I can't pretend to know what's going through the mind of madness. Why do everyone but me shart? It's a lie. It's not like this is a common thing. When it happens, I'm gonna post it. Because I think it's hilarious. Other people also find it funny and post it. So it gets upvoted on sites like this. And you are inundated with sharding posts? I guess. So you see it all the time and think everyone is lying about it? And to be fair, maybe some are. But yeah, you'll see it a lot. Pics of your junk or it didn't happen. No, my day is bad enough without showing 9,000 randos my fun grundle. So this happened around 2 a.m. Okay, some background. I'm a 300 pound, six foot two guy. So I'm not exactly the smallest of persons. Okay, so the TIFU. I was sleeping as one does and had been peacefully asleep since 9.30 p.m. And around 1.45, I wake up to excruciating pain in my left leg. It was like my muscle was getting torn from my body and that crap hurt. It was the worst cramp I've ever felt. So I immediately jump out of bed and I start looking for something to prop myself on. And as I'm doing this, I am dancing like a drunk ballerina. 
Now at this point, I was half asleep, disoriented, and in a lot of freaking pain. I finally find something to pride myself on, as my will of a body was about to sink the Titanic. Great, I thought, a windowsill. Turns out it was the window. My mammoth hands go straight through the glass and shatter the outside glass. My neighbor's dog starts barking, and I'm losing my crap. I pull my hand out, and it's thankfully shielded by the curtain, so I take my blanket and go to the living room to go back to sleep. I wanted to forget what just happened. Turns out it happened. Feels bad, man. This happened maybe 10 minutes ago. For the last few days, I've had horrible allergies. Ragweed is apparently in bloom here, and it's decided for the first time in my life that it hates me. So yeah, first time allergies. Sore throat, sneezing, blowing my nose every five seconds. You get the point. Moving on, here I am, minding my own business. It's a little after 10 p.m. and I'm debating on whether to watch one more episode of my show or do some light reading before bed. My dog has stolen my pillow and he's snoozing away unaware of what's about to happen. I decided to treat myself to a little snack before bed. Here I am enjoying this fabulous spoonful of Tillamook butterscotch ice cream that I just shoved in my mouth when I feel the sensation of a sneeze starting to build up. I could have just spit the spoonful of ice cream back in the bowl, but no, I was too determined to savor it and to hold back the sneeze. I thought I was going to be in the clear, but at the last second I realized that was not going to happen. So I made the split second decision to keep my mouth closed while sneezing. I didn't want to spray ice cream all over my computer. The resulting effect was that I popped both of my ears, and now I had cleared my runny allergy snot all down the bottom half of my face and part of my shirt. Well, I instantly started laughing at myself, and the process almost choked on my ice cream in my mouth. Plus the added bonus, I sucked up some of the snot that was running down my face while I was trying to clean myself up. I'm glad none of it landed in my bowl of ice cream though. This didn't happen today. As a matter of fact, it happened many years ago when I was a child. I recently remembered this story and realized I haven't posted it here before. Better late than never, I guess. Anyway, when I was around eight or nine years old, my friends and I, many of which were my close neighbors, would often play on a large green or field in front of my house. The large grassy area had many trees on each side. My friends and I would use these trees by pretending they were goalposts so we can play football or soccer if you're American. One day we were playing football and I was the goalkeeper. I was and still am pretty much quite unfit. So I usually prefer to play the goalkeeper because there isn't much running around in that position. Of course, during the match, I still manage to get very thirsty. So I tell everyone that I'm going to go back to my house and pick up a soft drink or a soda. My house was literally a couple of seconds away, so it didn't take me long to get back with my Fanta. I continued playing as goalkeeper, taking sips from the drink as the game progressed. By the time it was over, I say my drink was maybe half full or half empty, depending on your perspective. We decided to go home after that. And as it was a hot summer day and everyone was pretty tired, me, being a lazy kid, I didn't bother to bring my can inside. I just left it beside one of the trees and went home. The next day, or it could have been a couple of days, I can't quite remember, we came onto the green again to play some more. Keep in mind, it was a warm summer day, so I probably would have been thirsty. I assumed my usual position as goalkeeper, and I took the same goals as the previous match. My soft drink can was still there, and here's where I made the mistake. I suppose in my naive childish brain, I didn't see any problem with drinking from a can that's been sitting outside for many, many hours, exposed to the elements. It was my can after all. What could possibly be wrong with it? And so I began to take a big sip out of the can. I immediately realized my mistake. The sound of tens of bees reacted to my sipping gave me a terrible shock. That awful buzzing sound? It sent shivers down my spine. As I realized what I had done, I immediately dropped the can in a reflex, and a couple of the bees flew out. I didn't stop spitting for a solid minute. The taste of bees are absolutely disgusting. Thankfully, I didn't swallow anything. At least I hope I didn't. My teammates responded with some laughter, confusion, and a little bit of concern. They had a good laugh when they realized I wasn't seriously injured. I suppose what happened was the bees were attracted to the sugar in the Fanta. Thank you again for joining me. If you like those stories, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any stories you'd like to share, Please send it to my email, link down below. Thank you very much to the wonderful authors of Reddit that allow me to use their stories. Hope you join me again next time. I think I need to go touch up my makeup.